Hello and welcome to that British homestead. Today we're going to be doing some flowers and there's an absolute ton of them to sew so let's get started. Right so we're going to start off with these larger pots. I've watered them so they're, they're very damp as you can see and I'm going to be doing some more sweet peas because I'm just feeling at sweet peas this year. I do one per cell because I want loads of flowers these sweet peas I'm going to be sowing and I'm going to grow them like growing up in the wall between my allotments so a gives me some privacy b will look really cute and finally because the pollinators are going to all come and my I really want this year I really want the whole entire allotment to hum with just life that is what I'm excited about. So I've gone sweet peas. Apparently they smell really good. You can even have them as like cut flowers, which I didn't know because I've never grown these before. So tips are very welcome. Now I've got so many different types of sweet pea. I've got mammoth. I've got some white ones. Uh, the white ones are called white, which is <laughs> a fantastic name for sweet peas, aren't they? And these ones are called old fashioned, but they're quite exciting to just have really in general. I'm having quite a decent germination with them. And I believe I'm right by, I can multi sow these bad boys, but if I don't multi sow them and I go ahead and sow them one by one, I get more or bigger flowers. I think that's how it works. Please correct me if I'm wrong. Like I've said, I've never grown these before. Check those bad boys out. So I think I've overwatered these. I was listening to an audio book and I was like, oh, I want to finish this tra chapter and was like finding things to do whilst, um, <laughs> whilst listening to the end of the chapter. So I was like, I'll just water these 500 times and then I'll start. And it kind of went a bit extreme, didn't it? So yeah, I'm excited about these. So these ones were just from Untwined to Sweet Peas old fashioned selection so i'm ex expecting them all to be lovely colors now the next lot 50 pence you can't say no to 50 pence these ones are called sweet peas <laughs> so great name doesn't say the variety so it does say it makes excellent borders and cuttings which is exciting because that's what i'm going to basically use them for there we go one of them is i've got an escape pea so i don't know very much about sweet peas but i do know they're going to be very exciting to have and they're cold so once they germinate here in the warmth i'm going to go ahead and just pop them in the cold greenhouse i probably could bring them down right now but they're going to germinate a lot quicker if i warm them up and get them all toasted first now last but not least Squelch, squelch, squelch. You know that book? Um, we're going on a bear hunt. We're going to catch a big one. Squelch, squelch. That's what it reminds me of. So many sweet peas this year. It's going to be so nice. And I believe that when they become peas, they kind of like catapult themselves into the garden so that you don't sort of, I'm just double sowing some of them, so that you don't have to buy them again. They just like go across. And I don't believe peas cross very easily. But I could be wrong. If not, it'd be nice just to get a load of different colours. So I don't mind. There. Labelling time. I'm excited about these sweet peas. I hope that they're going to go well. I'm going to teach Jasmine how to identify them for sure. And then I won't have to worry too much about her eating them. It's the only thing I, I've been worried all these years. Sweet pea. Get on with some of these. So for these ones, I've got these lovely mixes that I've bought from Anster. Um, and these are just loads of different types of flowers. So I'm going to go ahead. They're called Sea of Pink, which I think it's pretty much what it says on the tin. So these are a load of different seeds. I'm going to go ahead and sow some. I have no idea what is in this mix i'm just going to randomly pick some so i've done the round ones and now there are some different sort of ones i'm going to do one where i pick out some different looking ones and see what happens to them some of these look like dahlias seeds but 
Who knows? I love getting mixes of things. Can't tell you what any of them are, but look how many different types of seeds there are. So next one is this beautiful selection of just rainbow selection. So I'm gonna go ahead and sow some of these. These are all dwarf flowers apparently, and they are hardy annuals. I think they're beautiful. Don't know what any of these are, because I'm not really a big flower person, believe it or not. There's a load of seeds there. I'm gonna randomly select some. Look at them, they're beautiful. Don't know what they are though. So I'm hoping some of them stay and reseat over the years and it'd be a lovely little selection. One, it's another mix of flowers. I know these are pansies. These are cotton, cotton balls or something like that, isn't it? They're very pretty though, so let's have a go. So they will flower about June, which is exciting. Once again, absolute whole myriad of seeds there. So let's go. We've got the last two. I'm gonna say so outdoors, so I might go ahead. I think some of them are poppies. I might go ahead and plant a handful outdoors soon like when it warms up a little bit it says may march but i'm telling you right now march doesn't mean what we have here because it is ridiculous it was snowing and sleeting the other day so what should i just write colorful flowers again right i'm gonna go ahead and put some vermicula over them one very light and it'll be able to be moved very quickly out of the way so that anything that's growing will be able to go through it or hold any sort of moisture really easily and that will what so i'm going to be doing so onwards and upwards should we go for some dawn chorus poppies aren't they beautiful so this is something that i bought it's a hardy annual but to be honest poppies are a perennial if you've ever bought uh, dumb poppies they do fantastic they can grow in the shade which is awesome there we go that's what i was looking for and it's good if they grow in the shade on the basis that not very much can grow in the shade apart from lettuce. Oh, so these are ridiculously small. So I'm just gonna literally just like sort of feather them in. Hard to see if any of them have got them in, but I promise you they do. This one's called Dawn Chorus and they are beautiful. Look, I've actually got some puppies that I sowed last year coming up. We have some living stone daisies i love daisies daisies are one of my favorite things to grow in terms of flowers i bet they have microscopic seeds they do have microscopic seeds so i'm gonna go ahead and do one row of daisies living stone daisies enhancing flowers rocket borders sounds very poosh so what are these called living stone daisies i've never even heard of living stone hopefully it means that they don't die back and i'm right colorful so that i know that they are colorful because i've got some ox hearts which are white daisies which i love there yeah. i used to see them on the way to where i used to work not where i work now next lupins very exciting so they are good for borders once again and you can imagine how impressively colorful this allotment is going to be once we're done with it guys and that is the point people always forget about flowers if you're growing vegetables i used to think i know it's going to shock you wow look at them seeds they're beautiful like the camera's not really picking them up i'm telling you they are breathtaking um I used to believe, right, that flowers were a complete waste of my time. But I tell you, when the flowers are out and when everything is in full flower, 
I'm not in heaven. Honestly, I'm not as happy as when I'm there. My daughter always says to me, Mummy, you're always happiest when you are at the allotment and looking at the flowers and things. I'm like, yeah, dude, I love them. Not that I'm not happy at home, don't get me wrong, but they are breath they're gonna be breathtaking. And I think these lupids, aren't they perennial? I mean like they, they just knock about forever. Apparently you meant to soak them overnight for best results. So do that. I haven't because I'm lazy. Okay, so marigolds next, shall we? I know I know people say marigolds are boring, but I have to say I quite like a marigold. I'm going to do them this way. I laid them like down last year and I tell you I got about one germinating. So, I'm going to do them like this. Why not? These are French marigolds. These are the marigolds that I'm used to. When you say marigold, I think French marigold. But I've just recently found out there's all sorts of marigolds. There's African marigolds. Oh, my goodness. I'd love to grow them. They look amazing. And, um... Yeah, they seed really well. I've saved seeds from marigolds before. Incredibly nice flowers, in my opinion. I know that some people think they're boring. They also, apparently, repel pests. Now, I say that with tongue-in-cheek, because if you remember last year, my marigolds, <laughs> my marigolds were in uh, with my tomatoes, and my tomatoes had never been attacked by a pest. And my marigolds were absolutely eaten alive, so it could be that they trapped the pests, I don't know. But it could be that that's just not true. So, yeah, take that with a pinch of salt. Put my arm in a load of wet, look. Blech. Should we do some of these parade mix? And what are these called? They're called La Vista. Let's see what these seeds look like. They're interesting looking seeds. They look like those shells of... Um, old sea creatures they're really cool looking i'm gonna do two up in this because i'm not gonna lie to you the seeds got damp so these are different colors pinks and whites they look very nice yeah they're cool I like those look i've never had them before and look how bad this packaging looks like to dry it out can you imagine if all of these come up they might them are probably have the nicest allotment I don't know where I'm going to put everything, but I'll put it outside the front and things. It'll be lovely. Scabious. I've grown some scabious, I believe, in the past. But not this packet. So these are all blues. So that'll be nice to have next to these. Oh, my goodness. Look how strange those seeds are. I generally, they look, they move like, they're very fluffy. Am I sure that I've, I'm going to push these down a little bit first and I do mean that not in a good way you see they like make my teeth itch like cotton wool I just want you to look at doesn't that look deeply haunting I was like oh it's mouldy I swear I've liked these before but obviously not because I've never seen a seed like that right so those are deeply haunting and done just dipping them down in the water okay so oh they look see scabious same things they don't look anything like each other. I think these are just a little bit flutter. They look like shuttlecocks, look. This is, I've seen these before. Don't they look like shuttlecocks? Your serve. So I think I've seen these before and nothing came up. So I might do two up. <laughs> the little shuttlecocks are going everywhere. I have no idea if I'm doing this correctly. Probably not, so bear with me. Do you know what I should do? I should do that over the bin and then I don't have a pile of just rubbish on the side. But hey ho, so what is this? This is cherry flavoured or cherry cherry berry. Who would call a flower a scabious? Putting that out there in the universe. I just don't know who would do that. Star blue. I don't remember what these look like. Oh, microscopic seeds. So these are brandy comb. Quite nice. After I get off the camera, I took ages tidying up, believe it or not. I'd love to be someone who came, comes up with these names. Whoever does it, it's like their day off when they're not naming paint. You know, <laughs> it's so random names. Let's see, what's this one called? Blue ball, actually. Yeah, that's what I said, cornflower. That's what I was saying earlier. I'm only cutting that off because it looks a bit yucky. They're not new. Cornflower. 
I've sewn these before, but I don't remember what the seeds look like. I like to get so accustomed with a seed that I can just look at the seed and be like, oh, I know you. Oh, these were in the mix. Look how weird they look. I don't know if you're as interested in um, seeds as I am. Probably not, because I'm a bit weird, but that's what I like to do. That one's going to have three, because it went in the wet. I wonder if cornflowers are different colours, or if they're all blue. <gasps> I've still got a mix, look. Oh, we'll do that next. And last but not least, shall we go ahead and do some of this corn this mix here look how beautiful it is <gasps> butterfly and you know how i was like oh oh some of these are perennials oh how cool is that Let's see if we recognize any of the seeds i oh, know this is cutting edge stuff here oh look already see some corn flowers <gasps> big flat seed look it's huge Let's put them in Scabious, look at that. That's a scabious there. Let's put him in. There's a lot of poppy seeds in here. I think that this one is a dahlia. This one, I think, is a zinnia. Don't know what that is. There's a black one there. It's going in. And what's that on the top of my fingers? You've locked yourself in. There is. Oh, it's a weird black spiky one. Look at that. Let's go for that as well. Oh, I think I didn't put that one in. Let's go for a really weird round flat one again. We will definitely sow some more of them. Hey, that's pretty cool. I like the idea of that. I don't see any corn. Ah, oh, look. There must be some different coloured cornflowers. Look, there's a white one there. Oh, I'd like that butterfly mix. Probably bring in all the cabbage whites so they can lay eggs on all my cabbages. I like butterflies. Now, last but not least, I'm actually going to do some herbs. And I know that herbs technically aren't flowers. I know this. But they do flower and I want herbs. So, no, I can't promise you I'm going to sow these out. But I am going to sow them. As in, I might keep them indoors and just have them as indoor herbs. Show you know what they look like, some of the seeds. This is parsley. I like growing herbs inside, like, my home garden. I might put them out the front because they're okay in shade. This is full sun, but honestly, they're okay in the shade. Well, as far as I know, I grew so much parsley last year. I've still got parsley. So it's like one of the only herbs that I got left because I put some questionable basil away and it rotted. So it took my whole entire collection that year. My my herb dear province. Right, so here I've actually cut <laughs> the packet. Um, here I've got some chives. And chives are amazing because they're perennial. I'm going to do the whole pack. Look. So, goodbye, chives. They be sown all year round if you keep them inside. And last but not least, basil. Which I actually ran out of and I've got 400 seeds in here, which is quite good. And these make lovely flowers. Oh, I got that all wet. It was sprouting. Right. Thank you so much for staying with me and keeping me company whilst I was sowing all of this lot. And I wish you some fantastic seed sowing over the month. And I'll see you next time. If you haven't already, please subscribe because you're going to see if I've actually <laughs> done anything worthwhile here. See you next time. Bye-bye.